So the Yankees make three more roster moves, and I have the new bench for you. And we have some encouraging news on Garrett Cole. Let's get into it now. What's going on, everybody? Hope you're all doing well. So the Yankees were off yesterday. Enjoyed a uh, walk-off, uh, not a walk-off, but a come-from-behind win the day before. So hopefully to get some momentum coming into a very tough series against the Tampa Bay Rays. Now, the Tampa Bay Rays are down a few guys. There's some injuries. They're top pitchers off to Tommy John. They did lose Tyler Glasnow to the Dodgers. They lost Manuel Margot, Juan DeFranco. So, but they've never been one to not develop more young players and still be competitive. And right now, every single team in the American League East is at 500 or above. So... With that said, this is going to be a, a challenging test. Now, speaking of the test, the Yankees' depth is starting to get tested a little bit, right? And we're going to see how well it is and how what they can you know, what they can do about it because they they had to make three roster moves. Okay, roster move one, they placed right-handed uh, pitcher reliever Nick Birdie on the 15-day IL with um, it's retroactive to the 17th, which is Wednesday was was Wednesday with hip right hip inflammation. Okay, as a corresponding move. They've recalled Cody Morris from AAA, so placed a pitcher with a pitcher. And the third move is they've added uh, Taylor, uh, T Taylor Trammell to the active roster. He's going to be replacing Kevin Smith, who was on there yesterday, right? So two pitching moves, one offensive move. Now, as it stands right now, this is what the bells, the, what the, the bench looks like. Either Austin Wells or Jose Trevino, Frank Grisham, Jamai Jones, Taylor Trammell. Now, it, this could look a little differently in a couple of days when DJ LeMay, who comes back, when um, John Birdie comes back. So it still remains to be seen because we'll have to make some more roster moves. And again, roster moves are roster moves, even if it's, even if it's on the margins. Okay, depth pieces have to be replaced here and there. Guys have to come up and down. They need to keep fresh arms in the, in the pen and fresh legs in the, on the bench. So these types of things happen a lot with the Yankees. So not every move. I know people call it dumpster diving and blah, 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 but... They're addressing needs where applicable, okay, and the bench is the bench. The fact is the bench is better than it was last year. It's better than it was the year before. So we can call it whatever we want. I'm just going to call it the bench, okay, and the Yankees are 13-6. and six. So not bad. Now, <clears throat> a bit of encouraging news, okay. This is reporting from Meredith Morakovitz. okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it out. Garrett Cole was out in right field earlier today, continuing his throwing program. 30 throws at 75 feet. So Tommy's been recovering great, no issue, no date to get on the mound yet, but it's very, very encouraging news for the Yankees. So anytime we can get encouraging news on Garrett Cole, I'll take it. We need him back, okay? The rotation is doing its best to hold itself together. We still need a little bit more length out of some of the starters, but they're doing what they can to hold, them, hold themselves together. And the fact is they are 13 and 6. So they're doing more than folks thought they would be. So kudos to them for that. The length will come, and you never know when Garrett Cole comes back. Does that mean Luis Hill gets moved to the pen? We don't know yet. Does that move Mester Cortez get uh, moved to long relief? We don't know. We'll see what happens. There's a lot of moving parts that could happen. There's a lot of options. We voiced a lot of different opinions here as well. So all I know is when that news comes, whenever it is, I'll get it to you. So if you're not subbed to this channel, be sure to sub to the channel. Okay, and hit the notification bells as well. That way, when I do go live, you know it. When news comes in, you know it. And you're the front of the line when it does come in. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart for it. So we're trying to we're closing in on 21,000 subs. Your support's more, it's very greatly appreciated. It really means the world. So now, one piece of news for tonight. One other piece of news. I have the Yankees lineup. Here we go. Anthony Volpe's leading off at shortstop. Juan Soto is batting second, right field. Aaron Judge batting third and second in center field. Giancarlo Stanton's back in there, cleanup. And DH, after a mammoth. He doesn't hit home runs. He hits nukes. So it's unbelievable. Anthony Rizzo's batting fifth at first base. Glaber Torres batting sixth, second base. Alex Verdugo, his bat's heating up too. Batting seventh in left field. Jose Trevino's at the dish. Batting eighth. And Oswaldo Cabrera, who's still hitting well. At third base, batting ninth. And on the mound, Clark Schmidt against the Tampa Bay Rays. Okay. Um, does DJ LeMahieu force somebody to sit? Wow, well, I don't know how they're gonna deploy him yet when he comes back. You know, he is feeling good and so on and so forth, but does it make more sense for him to for them to sit Labor Torres on a day that 
DJ can play. And then maybe sit Rizzo on a day where I'll move him to DH or maybe give him a day off. Because both of their defense has been spotty right now. Right now, Rizzo, who's known as an elite defender, it looks like he's might have lost a step a little bit. And Glaber Torres has always been known as a uh, kind of a lackluster defender um, and a you know, not attentive defender at all times or even a base runner. So he, can, he tends to mentally fall asleep at times. Um, so and it's frustration, man, and uh, much to the frustration of a lot of fans. So I don't know what's going to happen. All I know is if, if Oswaldo keep, keeps playing the way he is, I would not sit him for DJ LeMahieu. I would sit Rizzo first. I would sit Glaber Torres first. Okay. And give those guys a rest. You know, I mean, those most of these guys, Glaber Torres, Alex Verdugo, um, Juan Soto, Anthony Volpe, these, they, these guys have played all 19 games so far. All 19 games. They could use a DH day. They can use an off day. And people, I don't know, I've gotten so much heat from people. So it's load management. These are these are pro players. You can't baby them. This is not babying them. Even if you sit them once every 20 games, they still play 150 games. You have to take care of their body. We do not wait for them to be injured to then talk about load management. Load, ma load management has to happen from the beginning of the season, through the middle of the season, through the end of the season. That's how you keep athletes healthy. As a former competitive athlete, okay, in multiple sports, I'm, I'm a firm, I have a lot of experience in this. This is just common sense, too. And anybody that's played in competitive sports, especially ones that don't really have an off season, you know how rest, uh, how, how important rest is. I really do. So, and I hope that they consider sitting these guys at least at least one game on occasion to give them a rest. I know it's, you know, we want to want so to play 162 games last year. Well, good for him. That's great. And I, you know, I hope he continues to play it, but I would not, I want to rest him because, the, you know, the Yankees are, are potentially, you know, they're going to make a deep run in the playoffs. That's the plan, right? And they're going to need Juan Soto for that. And it's a tough path to navigate in the American League. We need him to be healthy. We need him to be rested, just like Aaron Judge, just like Giancarlo Stanton, just like the rest of these guys. So I hope that they will start prioritizing this type of stuff. Okay. As much as it's nice to have everybody play games, it's nicer to see them playing games late in the season. It's nice to see them not have to make frequent trips to the IL. I think he's done far too often for the last couple of years. And sometimes that's riding people too hard in these games, right? And continuing to put them out there, continuing to put them out there when you know a day off could help. And now that they have a little bit better depth and we have more reinforcements coming soon, it makes it a little bit easier to give these guys a little bit of rest. And I hope, I really hope that they'll do that. But we'll see. I mean, I don't work for the team on our own team. That's what I would do, okay, to preserve the health of the athletes. But that's just me, okay? And everybody's entitled to agree or disagree. That's totally fine. So, but you let me know what your thoughts are, okay? Yeah, I mean, and how do you feel about this? I, I think they could take two out of three from Tampa. And then the Oakland A's come in. I think they could take two out of three from Oakland. And again, if they win four out of six, then they're 17 and, what is that, 17 and eight? Pretty good. Pretty good. So um, I'll take that 17 and eight, do 25 games. And if you multi, if you, if you, you know, let's say the first 50 games, you times that, they're 34 and 16, 18 games old. I'll take that too. All day, every day, twice on Sunday. Okay. That's kind of how I'm mathing it as well. And it's obviously, it's not going to turn out exactly that way, but you can easily math this out incrementally. Instead of just saying, well, times it by five, I'd write times it by two first, four times by five. So, but that's just me. But let me know what your thoughts are, gang. Load up the comments. Let's talk about it. You know, who, if you were to rest anybody, who would you rest? Okay. And I'm, I'm just, and again, I'll make this clear. I'm saying one day here, one day there. Okay. Not four days in a row, five days in a row. Okay. Because, and, and some folks make a good point. That is enough to put somebody on a cold streak. Okay. And yeah, it is enough to do that. And that's the last thing I want for a team that's, but again, this team is, you know, equipped enough to not get into extended losing streaks and fight their way back after a three game losing streak like they did the other day. Whereas other teams like the Yankees would have lost eight games in a row or 16 out of 20, which they have done over the last two years as well. They've done these stinker streaks. And I think this team is a better, is better set up now to not do that. Okay, and to fight back even harder. 
Okay, that's what that's what excites me as a Yankee fan. It really does. So I'm hoping to go live and celebrate a win tonight. Let's go, Yankees.